Hi everybody. Hey. Welcome back for another Wind Down Wednesday. Yeah. That's a much better chance of us making videos now that we're back in our school schedule and don't have Good. all the random summer stuff going on. Still inside because we're still going through a heat wave here in Florida. So. This is a special uh, video tonight. Yes. Very special. We're very excited. These are uh, the two wines from our newest uh, partner in Scout and Cellar. It is called Sun, Wind, and Soul. So if you have, um, if you have purchased uh, Scout and Cellar wines before, uh, we used to have a, a brand called Bookbinders Apprentice. My favorite. They were really fantastic wines and they were like one of the lower priced wines. Yeah. So again, you hear people say all the time, don't judge a, a bottle by its by its label or oh, by it's, its my price. Favorite. My favorite. It was a really great uh, value wine. It I mean, went with a lot of different things. So we are really anxious. This is kind of supposed to replace the Bookbinders Apprentice. And from the description, it sounds like it's going to be really tasty. So they've so. completely eliminated the entire Bookbinders line? I'm not sure if they still have, because remember they had Bookbinders and they had Bookbinders Apprentice. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, it was yeah, from yeah. the same grower. I don't know if they still have Bookbinders or not, but uh, definitely Bookbinders Apprentice. Well, we'll try this. This bottle has sweated down. It's still a little chilly. We are going to start with this the is a brand new wine. white blend. So we have a white blend and a red blend. Right, this would be your, your sun, wind, and soul. So this is a California wine. Let's... It is $19 a bottle. Um, and it's described as fruity and crisp. Are you getting anything right off the bat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Um, definitely fruity and crisp. Uh, pear forward. Yeah. I haven't eaten anything, so I can't tell you about that. But uh, definitely better than the... Bookbinders Apprentice White one. Does this kind of uh, like bring out any feelings of any particular like season that you think you might want to drink this more than others? Well, Does it taste like summertime? Upon, it smells like summertime. Like on, on summertime, upon the second sip, I get that I get that little tingle in my my jaw. It's like like a little bit of sweetness. No, it's a, it's just the, I think it might be the the the, the 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 fruit forwardness of it. It's just it's good. I think this also, it's based really on the good. description, it, it also kind of leans more towards like spring, spring, summertime, I think. Yes. yes. So this is a blend. It is 57% French Columbard, 26% Chardonnay, 17% Sauvignon Blanc. So this is some of my favorite whites. Almost that little effervescence in the back of the throat Are like you? a Riesling. Yeah, you know how I do that. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Oh, you're right. I am kind of getting a little bit of like that. Yes. There's definitely no bubbles in this, though. But you. You're getting effervescence, aren't you? I don't know. Maybe because of it's the, um, you know, the other stuff that they put in the the wine to, to, for the fermentation. Maybe that's just the like the acidity or something. It, it, I mean, it's it's very Delightful. pleasant on the on the palate. So, um, they, they describe this as fresh and vibrant. This wine was truly born in the vineyard. Crisp pear and juicy melon combine over layers of white flower aromas and notes of apricot. Ooh, that just screams Boy, like springtime to me. They know what they're doing. Yeah, they I'll do. Tell you right now, they know what they're doing. And to get to achieve, achieve these flavors, wow. they, they tinker with the blend of how much they use of each grape and how, what, how that creates that final taste. Wow. The perfect house white wine for any occasion. I think I would probably agree with that. I could really see having this with a lot of with different anything. kinds of Fish, foods. Yeah. Pork. It says it pairs well with fresh salads, mild cheeses, and sunsets on the patio. Definitely not sunsets on the patio in Florida right now because nope. you, you would die of heat stroke. I'm sorry. Can't take it. We, we go for walks sometimes and we, we have to look at the weather. If it's, if it's overcast, we go. <laughs> we go. And, um, if it's blazing sun, you don't go right now. You just don't. You can't. I mean, 10 minutes outside and you are like really, I'm not kidding, overheated. Your right. face is red. No matter how much water you drink, you just have to get back into the shade or inside. Yeah. Well, my neighborhood is not shaded well. Hers is though. So it probably wouldn't be bad to walk here. No, it's still bad. You have a hard time? <laughs> yes. Okay, now I have a little spiciness and see what it does. I'm having a little bit of just grilled pork chop, a little bit of seasoning on it. Mm, it mm. cuts the spiciness. Oh yeah, going down the, it cuts the, the spiciness. Mm. Yeah, definitely the, the zing sauce, the Asian zing. Well, okay, so I would say 
This definitely goes Excellent. any kind of poultry. Excellent. The, the pork. I mean, any kind of like light colored meat. I think you probably would would love this. Any kind of you want to add onto your salad. I think definitely like some fishes too. I'm not a big white guy, but I mean, well. <laughs> white wine. Right. But um, figuratively speaking, but damn, I like this a lot, a lot. What a way to for, for a little, midweek yeah. to end the stress, Uh huh. the stress of life. Yeah. Ooh. Wine helps. You have a shirt that says that, don't you? Wine listens. Oh, wine listens. Mm -hmm. What would you have? Pepper? My dad has a shirt that says whiskey helps with the, um, the spreadable cheese. With the, the sweet peppers, oh my gosh, it's delicious. Oh wow! And I'm because I'm, I'm talking about salads and stuff that go with it. I have a few. I, I obviously didn't make it. Yeah, this salad. is We're not too snacking. sweet and not too light. It's like a perfect balance in between. I normally don't say that about whites. Watch all the videos. I normally don't talk about that, do I? I don't. I don't love whites, but I love this. You know what's funny is that you know a couple of weeks ago when we did the uh, the Gallivant Reserve Sauvignon Blanc, that was another new one. Yeah. Um, we were both talking about how it was like the perfect blend between a Sauvignon Blanc and almost leaning a little bit Chardonnay. This is kind of similar, De definitely different notes, different flavors, different taste, but I kind of would put that on the same level. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely do it too. It's, it's, it's smooth. It's Very smooth. smooth. And it's, it's like, a... like round, uh, just like soft, almost creamy. Well, you see flavors. me. You see me keep pouring because I can tell you right now, yes. I wouldn't be pouring if it doesn't taste good. It tastes really good. So the soil to sip report again, just kind of letting you know the whole process. So like there was never anything else added to this wine, and this is how the the grapes were grown. So it says the grape varieties were sourced from wines ranging from six to twenty five years old. Each varietal was picked for freshness and character, picked at night to maximize vibrant acidity. Fermented God. in stainless steel vats to amplify crisp minerality and brightness. You know I love a good wine that has some minerality to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's for 14 to 21 days. It went through that process. I, we've seen several of their wines where they say specifically that the grapes were picked at night. That's odd. But it's, it's, part of, it's part of their technique and their process to achieve the taste that they want. Mm -hmm. um, it says, and finally aged briefly in stainless steel vats before blending to combine flavor profile before bottling. This is made in California, correct? Yes. Okay. It doesn't say specifically what part of California, but uh, so the tasting notes are pear, um, or pear, melon, apricot, and white flowers. And again, they, they, they say that they, it pairs well with salads and, and mild cheeses. The ingredients for this wine are grapes, tartaric acid, yeast, and sulfites. That's all you're gonna get? Are you making a, you didn't quite get it all the way in there? No. When you're? <laughs> they suck. So, uh, the, this is 12.5% alcohol. It is uh, 1.75 grams per liter of residual sugar. So this is a little bit higher. A lot of the Skeleton Cellar wines will be less than one gram yep. um, per liter of residual sugar. Again, not added sugars though. So, you know, definitely not as bad. Well, and uh, just a little fun fact, it's like they talk about picking the grapes at night. Mm -hmm. I'm growing green beans, tomatoes, and peppers from seed right now. Mm -hmm. And I've got all the babies. And it's funny how in the morning, at night, it's dark out, they sit there, the plants, you know, the, the lights on outside or whatever. But in the morning when the sun starts coming up, the plants start leaning towards the sun. The, the little babies will lean towards the sun. Yeah. And it's like, you know, of course, this, the, the baking all day long, I miss them, they get missed it. But it's just amazing because at night, I think plants are in their most vibrant. They're like, and then maybe the grapes are the most vibrant at that point. And they probably you know get mean? some relief from the, from the sun. So they kind of tend to perk up a little bit more once the temperatures drop. And the skin of the grape might, the, the, the whole texture of the interior meat of the grape might mm -hmm. change. And you know what I mean? And that's but, something to really learn more about if we were able to go um, to visit like any of these vineyards. That's the only reason I would go to California. It. I'll be honest with you. I would, <laughs> the only reason would be to try to go to the vineyards in Northern California. Mm -hmm. But I, would, I wouldn't mind going to Oregon or, or the state of Washington. Honestly, rural parts. So I wouldn't know, you want to do that really, explore all yeah, that? Yeah, beautiful landscape. Much different than Florida. I mean, there are wineries all over Oregon, Washington, and California, Northern California. So the sulfites for this wine is only 68 parts per milliliter. 
Um, most of the Skeleton Cellar Clean Crafted wines are going to be 100 or less. So the higher the sulfites, the more, it's, it's almost like an allergic reaction that a lot of people have, me especially. I really had to swear off white wines for a while because they would just give me terrible headaches. And it's, it's typically because of the higher level of the sulfites. So I'm really looking forward to the fact that I can drink this wine and probably not have a headache in the morning. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm again. I'm not a a, a big red blend or white blend guy, but this is right up there. I mean, this is way up there. Even with the higher price ones, the higher end ones, this is way up there. And it's only nineteen dollars a bottle. I mean, it's way up there. Mm -hmm. This is like literally. If you guys are not familiar with the Scout and Cellar brand, this is the perfect way to get started. Because I've already tried the red. Hint. Spoiler alert. I took a shot of it the other night, but um, mm -hmm. and then I stopped. I, I was out with friends and I came home and I opened I the know, bottle. I know, it's like he's cheating on me. I was cheating on her, I did. But I gotta tell you though, this white is definitely like a nine and a half in my book. I mean, this is like way I, up there. I would tend to agree. I'm really liking this one. I loved the Gallivant Reserve. There wasn't other, the regular book binders, there was a Sauvignon Blanc or, or a white wine that they came up with that yeah, I told you, you that love. was had, well, the, 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 uh, the, I think the book binders, it was an expensive Ooh, bottle. Cool. It had that really strong like key lime taste to it, like key lime pie. Remember that was one that I mm. gave like a really high rating to. But there are lots of Did I like it? Of you didn't like it as much as I did. We both have forks we're not using. I know we're not even <laughs> using them. That's fine. We'll just use finger foods. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is for anybody who's who's like me trying to watch your your intake. Um, this is 101 calories per five ounce serving and 0 0.259 grams of carbs per five ounce serving. So Perfect for your lifestyle. It is, it is perfect for my lifestyle, and I'm trying to lean and more mine. towards the, the vegetables and the meat. I'm only having trying to have a little bit of cheese. Yeah, well, cheese um, is not bad. What depends on certain cheeses are like higher in fat and cholesterol, so you gotta, you got to be choosy. You should eat some Asian the, and have some I don't like to have spicy with the wine because I feel like that, that takes over the, the, the taste of the wine. Um, so I found this interesting because I kind of put two and two together when they first released this, and I wondered, I had to do a little more research. I, have, I was wondering if they are related to each other or not. So we have Sun, Wind, Soul. When you translate that into French, I know you're probably asking what, what's random, why French? <laughs> it translates into Soleil, Vent, Ami. Mm. We have another uh, label in Scout and Cellar that is called Soleil, Vent, Ami. That is a French wine. Good one. So I'm really curious if these have any kind of connection wow. to each other. Um, but that, that was a, a very an interesting little uh, do we know fun which, fact. Do we know which vineyard this is? No, it doesn't. It, it, I'd have to do a little more digging. Maybe I could find it more on the, the website as a consultant. But uh, it says it's inspired by the French word terroir, <laughs> meaning it reflects the soil <laughs> and <laughs> place <laughs> of, the, of the vineyard. <laughs> do, say that three times fast. I know. It's, I'm just going to I'm just gonna wing it, and I'm just going to pretend like we didn't even hear that word. Uh, and me trying to uh, pronounce it. So, um, I mean, very, moments. very, just a, 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 a great light wine. I honestly, like, I could see this really mm. going well with a lot of, yeah, even a, a good Thanksgiving wine. We're, we're, we have to plan for Thanksgiving, so I'm definitely going to get some of this. There's so many wines that we've had from Scout and Cellar. We keep saying, like, oh, we have to buy some of this for Thanksgiving. We're going to end up having like 20 bottles of wine. We'll, we'll drink them. <laughs> Well, we do have a big crew this year, so. Yes. I am, I yeah. I'm looking forward to All of my that. kids are coming. All of them. And my mother. Everybody's going to be there. That's a rare occurrence to have everybody there all together and her at mom, once. And her mom and dad are going to be there. And, and uh, my son. And your son's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think we should play Cards Against Humanity. It depends on how late we get started with dinner. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get everybody rounded up by like five. We can eat at five and then settle down. You know, then we're going to do desserts. We're not going to be able to eat like everything in dessert, you and I. We're no. going to get sick physically. I, I know. The after we, we've, pie and all that. we've made a change in our lifestyle. And I, honestly, there are certain foods now, if I were to try to eat it, it would really upset my stomach. I think my, my body would be like, what are you doing? We both agree that's going to be our cheat day, but is it worth it? it well, okay. you're going to have to be. So you have a lot of carbs. You have the mashed potatoes. You have the corn casserole. Green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. You have uh, rolls, stuffing, stuffing, rolls, all that, lots and lots of carbs. And I know that I'm already. We're going to get sick. I, I, I can already tell. So I, I just said I'm going to do like one little small scoop of, of all those things and the turkey. I think I'm just going to have to pass on desserts altogether. I think I, I think so too, even though, I mean, I would I, I love 
I love apple pie with whipped cream, homemade whipped cream on oh, it. Yeah. I do. I love it. I love her mom's apple pie. I mean, I mean, my God, I love it. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like you like. Do you do any? I love you, her pecan pie. She hates oh, making it. Oh, I love it. that. She oh, hates I love making that. it, but but I love oh, her pecan pie. Oh, that's delicious with with that with heavy whipped cream. Mm -hmm. But you know, here's the thing. It's like, do you insult your family members if you don't eat <laughs> something they bring? Okay, I've gone through this numerous years. So has she. She's been with me. We've insulted certain family members because we didn't eat certain things, and I think not intentionally. I've insulted maybe your mom because I didn't eat a pie or something. Maybe she. But you know what? It's because I'm trying to lose weight. And my son the other night, I went to his house. He's probably gonna watch this video. Yes, I'm talking about you. And you offered me pasta. You made fettuccine alfredo chicken or something. And it was. And I know you're a great chef, son. But I'm on a diet. It's eight o'clock at night. I stop by to see my grandkids. I can't eat a huge plate of fettuccine oh, yeah. Alfredo with chicken. No. He puts it in front of me. He says, "Eat," and I'm like, "And that's what that you know? That's what we do. Italians. They put food in front yes. of you. Here, eat. Yes. You know, are you hungry? And and then they sit there and watch you. And I'm like, I can't. I can't do that. If if we did that, we'd, I'd be I'd gain ten pounds. Well, and at this point, I'm gonna feel sick. Right. So I think on Thanksgiving we have to promise ourselves that we're not gonna. Get drunk on food. We're not gonna overdo it. Yeah, please don't overdo it. You're gonna be there in bed later going, uh, uh. You know what I could do? I could try to, um, for two days before doing anything. No, hope, hopefully my family members aren't watching this video. No. This particular video they don't watch. But maybe I could sneak in some healthy alternatives. So maybe instead of mashed potatoes, it's mashed cauliflower. And maybe. Um, in my green bean casserole, I can find some alternatives uh, to the like fattening stuff, that, like the Campbell's soup. You could use Lipton mushroom soup. You know the Lipton packets. You well, right, and then maybe use like water. I, well, water or maybe like almond milk or yeah. something like that. So it still yeah. kind of has that creamy texture to it. Well, I'm going to have to research some but some Pinterest. Recipes. You have to put the the onion crispies though, because that's a. I know. Maybe you do your own onion crispies. Again, I'm gonna do some research beforehand to figure out how I can do this to, to make it a little bit like uh, like lower carb, because otherwise, I, yeah, I'm just gonna feel miserable. Well, I'm not making rolls. I'm not but, making. No, you're rolls. gonna have to make it because other yeah, people that, that are they're, they're definitely going to eat it, and we just have to pass. On the that. cornbread. I make cornbread muffins. The, the problem is, all of my kids are going to be there. It's going to be a packed house. So I have to make cornbread muffins. And they definitely are not on a diet. No, they're not. They need to be watching their weight. They're all skinny minis, <laughs> all of them, and they eat whatever they want. So I'm going to make a big bird. I'm going to make the stuffing. Now, oh, mom's making the stuffing. She's proclaimed, I now, am okay, making the so stuffing. Now, okay, so let's just take, let's take a step back. It's August, and we're already talking about November. So well, I think we need, to pull it, mood. we need to pull it back into... Now, this wine will get me in the mood of... Maybe you and I should plan a cheat night a month from now and do a, do some red and do some pasta. Okay. I'll, I'll make we a small amount of homemade. Because right now when we do pasta, we do like zoodles or spaghetti squash or something else like that. What if I his do? his garlic marinara sauce is so fresh with lots of really great vegetables and everything. And then we just do some kind of lean meat with it. It, yep. it, it, it is absolutely it's delicious and you don't feel so like like. Bogged down after I'm growing. It. I'm growing uh, yellow pear tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and San Marzano tomatoes. Which obviously it's a very slow process. Yes. I'll tell you, these babies take yeah, forever. It takes a while. It's going to be December before I have sauce. Mm -hmm. December before we have sauce. Yeah. But if we have San Marzano sauce, are you ready for the red? Yes. I know. That I'm, I'm staring at you because I my, my glass has ogling. been empty for a she's while. Ogling. She's ogling. She's ogling. My glass has been empty for a are while. You re she's ready for that, the finale. Yes, she, are you ready? Yes. Okay. I, I know you already sampled this, and I'm look a little, at the darkness. Look at the color. little annoyed that you already have a preview of this before me. And I want you to smell. Okay. So this is another California wine. It's a red blend. God. And again, nineteen dollars a bottle. Are you, are you get goosebumps? Oh, well, let me take a, a let me take a sniff. Just sitting next to me. Yeah, I do. I get goosebumps. Well, I haven't seen you in five. Years. I I know it's been a while. It's like caging Between an school, animal. Like work and, you... and school and everything else. I know we we've kind of been I we have not seen each other as frequently. Ooh, now, now smell that. Tell me what before. you think. I'm not. It's it's not wowing me. I, honestly, I'm sorry. When, when I smell it, I, it's not. It's, very fruity. it's not. But as soon as I taste it, I'm sure I will probably have a different opinion about it. 
So this is a blend of 50% Cabernet Sauvignon, 35% Zinfandel, and 15% Petite Syrah. So do you, okay, the Petite Syrah, sometimes I feel like that gives a little bit of a peppery the taste. plummy. You're not getting peppery though. No, I'm getting very plummy. I'm not a big fan of peppery. Very plummy, fruit forward. When you taste it immediately, it's like black and plums. And they do describe it as fruity and bold. Very fruity, fruit forward, black plummy. Okay. So this is described as fruity and bold with notes of cherry, red and mm -hmm. black fruits, and round tannins. All I can tell you is wait till you take a big okay. bite. What are you getting? Plummy? I, I, I do get plummy and like the red and black fruits. That's the first thing that like I it? get. Maybe it's a tiny little tad bit of cherry. I'm trying it with some other things and I'm gonna see how that changes because I didn't cleanse my palate after the white. Mm. So I think I'm still getting a little bit of that. Um, it says, a wine born in the vineyard, again, our sun went soul, red wine is a smooth, bold, and flavorful wine for any time. Notes of cherry and black raspberry fly out of the glass, finishing dry and round. I really, I'm not getting dry. A perfect wine for any occasion. Pairs well with anything off the grill, takeout, and neighborhood parties. Again, these blends are perfect for like pretty much anything that you want to serve. The, the, the type of wines that they put together, uh, it's cab normally is reads really dry to me. Yeah. And this, I don't get dry at all. Well, okay, so a Cabernet Sauvignon, a good one, would be definitely a, you know, let's have a, let's have filet mignon tonight. Let's mm -hmm. have a nice Cabernet with it. Uh -huh. That's a great wine for filet mignon. Um, this wine is extremely fruit forward, and if you look, okay. I love a good Zinfandel, a red Zin. I love. I'm gonna bring that. It's very dark. It is means, very dark. Which means it's very good for you. Okay. I want you to look at the coloring. It's very dark. Can't see the. Not translucent. Which means it's very, very good for you. And out of all of the things my doctor told me, she said dark red wines are like literally one of the best. Things. Even on my plan, my my. Um, I'm not gonna call it a diet. It's it's really more of a lifestyle change, and be more conscious about what you put into your body. They say specifically, once you get to a certain point, that yes, you should really introduce the red wines back in there because of all the health benefits. This particular company, this particular wine, you could drink a gigantic glass of this every night. And it wouldn't hurt you. Well, it would make you feel good, but and it, <laughs> it, it, tastes, it tastes really good. Okay, now I have a, a little. Um, Side note, I had some of the smoky Gouda, mm -hmm. and then I had this wine, now I'm getting more dry. I get more of the cab. It, it, it is, it, it has a cab side effect. It really does with different foods. I'm trying the green beans, the tomatoes, the peppers. Okay. When we move in together, I'm gonna have a huge garden. I, I can't wait. Well, I mean, huge. you're gonna have a, a garden before then, but I can't wait to have all these fresh vegetables. Can you, it's every night you're gonna have a nice fresh salad. Every yes. Night of stuff that we grow. I love Nobody that. Else Nobody else grows. I love best. knowing that it's local and it comes from like I I know where how it was grown and like there's there's nothing. We may gross have chickens. Put have chickens. There. We could. We could get eggs too. Yeah, I might have chickens. Maybe. Now, I'm not in the business of slaughtering chickens. I'm gonna leave that to you. Yeah. But I'll take care of it. I'll go get the eggs. I don't mind doing that. The hens would love you. They go. Bop, 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 bop. They you probably would. They, you know who else what? loves me? No. My students. Oh, I yeah. kid you not. I we've been you. in school. This is the fifth day. Well, I love you too. This is the fifth day that we've been in school because we started last Thursday. I literally have had at least three students come up to me just in five days of being in my class and come up and give me a big bear hug. And like, I love your class so much. Thank you so much for being my teacher. She hasn't been complaining about the, this group, this batch. Oh my gosh, they are so sweet. I, I was really nervous this year coming into it because I kind of heard some things at the end of last year that this, this year was going to be really challenging, even worse than last year. Is it? And that is not the case at all. Everybody is saying, all the kids that they've had coming through their classes, they are so sweet. And I totally agree. They are really great kids. Well, that makes me feel good because I don't have to every single day at lunch. <laughs> I don't have to hear. Here we talking about, I have the countdown. Oh, I did figure out what my countdown is until I reach my 30 years. I know the exact date. When is it? It is January 1st of 2032. That's a special number to me. I know. Well, 23 is a special number for you, but 
32. I know, 2022. I'm either going to die this year or win the lottery. So I so. have I have less than nine years left, but until I reach my my uh, my 30 years and I get my full pension. Unless we unless we pop for a billion and mega now, millions. Now, unfortunately, I'm such a spring chicken. When I reach my 30 years, I will not be of retirement age. So I can retire from the classroom if I so choose. And then I can still continue a career, maybe in something else re involved in education, or if I want to go try something else, I can. But... You can work with me. January 1st of, tw of 2032. I have a great business. I yes, I could come work with you. I'm a pure capitalist. Let's just put it that way. You know that I'm a web developer. I am. That's what I do. And you still do that. I do that. I'm still doing that right now. But I also have an, a huge, enormous online business where I sell things. I buy and sell things. And what's, what's entrepreneurialism about? What is it about? It's about buying this for a low price and selling it for a high price, right? Mm -hmm. Capitalism at its finest. I could buy this for a dollar. And if I sell it for 10, am I a bad person? No. I'm an American. Because there are people out there who will pay $10 for that. They'll pay $10, but we paid a buck for it. So we're not bad people, we're just capitalists. I had some of the, uh, I have some uh, a woman after chicken my breast tacos. Oh, I, love, I love that. So I'm, I'm going to eat all It's delicious. Well, you can't eat it all. You have to leave some for me. <laughs> so, okay, I'm, I'm going to go into, again, the Soil to Sip report, just mm -hmm. letting you know how this wine was made. And there, seriously, this is it. This is all that it takes to make this wine. They don't put anything else in there. There's no, no other funny business going on to create this wine. You ready? Yeah, I have three bottles of this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this um, weekend. Sourced from soils that meet the clean crafted commitment, picked from eight to 30 year old vines. Each variety was grown to maximize varietal characteristic of flavor, picked at night again, by hand, by hand, not by my machine, and, and then fermented in stainless steel. Well, it's it's important to uh, to make sure you you talk about picked by hand. You have actual people picking the the grapes off the vines. Some of the big growers and the the store bought the uh, they, they use these big claw machines that come in and just grab everything. And I don't know why they would do that because it seems like that would destroy the vine as well. But then they also come through and it picks up stuff off the ground. Leaves so just think stuff. about leaves, but also think about uh, rodents and other creatures that roam through a vineyard Bugs. and droppings and other things that they leave behind all of that gets scooped up and and gets taken with the Dumped grapes into the, bin. into the process of how they make their grapes i'm sorry it's a really gross thought but just yes. being honest well okay so, so these were hand picked at night so you don't get all that extra garbage in there here here's the deal you get what you pay for capiche this is still just nineteen dollars a bottle. Come on, right. give me a break. Right. You, you go to the store, you buy a fifteen dollar bottle of wine. Oh, it's no, got no, all no, kinds no, no. of yucky stuff in there that you that you really don't even know. That if you knew about it, you'd be like, I'm never buying that With again. With inflation right now, the way it is, you can go go to the store and try to buy a bottle of Yellowtail Shiraz. I looked tonight. One bottle of Yellowtail Shiraz is thirteen ninety nine. Okay, so for, for five dollars more, you get this. Are you kidding me? This is like a thousand times better for you, health for health wise and taste wise. So I'm just saying, I think inflation has gotten to the point, and their prices are still really good here. That you have now, you have a choice. You have a choice. Spend a few dollars more and get something that's very healthy for you, mm -hmm. low carb, and and you can feel good about drinking mm -hmm. it. Because I can tell you right now, I rate both of these nine and a half. Both of them. This is very good. Um, so it says that uh, these varietals were aged separately for at least six months in stainless steel before blending and further aging, then bottled under a sustainable cork. Right. Okay, so I know uh, some of us are, are, are very health conscious and, and, and also looking at trying to save the planet. We do our part to recycle and all these different things. So sustainable cork means you're not taking away from Mother Nature and not replenishing. It's sustainable. Most corks are made of like uh, chip, wood chips, right? Well, some of them are moving to synthetic uh, materials now. They like they that. they make their own. It's and it, it messes up whenever you're you're using the I like cork wood remover. Chip cork. Sometimes they like break off and into it, oh the plastic corks. It. Yeah, it's, it's no good. Sometimes they get sucked in there and you can't get them out. You know what? I wouldn't even mind if they put this in a box and I could just stick a straw into it and just. How about a tap on the tap? Yes, or or a spigot on the end of it. And when you come home from work, you just go. 
you know what? It stays fresh because it stays sealed up. You just pour out however much you want. And then yeah, but, you don't have to drink. You don't have to worry about the bottle going bad but like drinking it by a certain amount of time. You would have that in a box. And by the end of the week, it'd be gone. So you don't have to worry about it. Well, I would take you a little from work. night by night. I would just take a little. Yeah, a couple. You know, just with dinner. Right, right. Drinking responsibly. Just a little sip every now yeah. and then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so the tasting notes for this wine. We kind of talked about this before. It's cherry, raspberry, and blackberry. Um, it says it pairs really well with a grilled chicken, pretty much any grilled meat I think it definitely would go with. Uh, it's, it specifically said Chinese takeout. Now we talked about the, the uh, taco meat that goes well with that. So maybe some of the Chinese flavors that, that would probably would go eat, well with too. Would you have sauce with this? Probably. Yeah, you'd have, you'd have a yeah. pasta. Um, okay, so the ingredients of this wine are grapes, tartaric acid, yeast, malolactic yeast, and sulfites. It is 12.5% alcohol, the same as the white, and it is 0 0.45 grams per liter of residual sugar, so definitely less residual sugar than the white for this Which one. Which is, is weird because I'm getting a heavier taste, but that might be coming from the fruit. Right. So it's And this is slightly lower in um, sulfites. It's 50 parts per milliliter of sulfites for wow. this one. A lot of times you find that the reds are beans. lower, I'm, and I'm not exactly sure why, but wow. reds are lower in sulfites than, than whites. But these are both less than 100 parts per milliliter. Um, so you might find that you don't have as, if you have problems with wine, you might find that you won't have those same problems when you uh, when you drink these. Well, with the green beans, I'm gonna have fresh green beans for you. Yes. In about a month. It's gonna take a little bit, but yes. About a month, you're gonna. Did you have... try, I'm gonna try a little bit of the uh, dried that. cherries. What do you think? It's, th with this the, is an awesome wine. The this, red fruit. This wine, this wine is great, and with the the different kinds of meats, the uh, the pork and the chicken. Excuse me, my allergies are really acting. Oh up. no. Well. So the red fruits definitely bringing out, kind of complementing those notes of the of this wine. Yes, but I can tell you though, both of these for being a, a lesser cost wine are awesome, off the charts. Oh my gosh, they're fantastic! They're try it with some of the other more expensive wines, and they probably they, they like glass to glass. If you covered the labels, you wouldn't know. I'm telling you right now, both of them are very. High end tasting. Which one? Yeah, which one was the more expensive? Which one was the less? You so wouldn't Christmas be able to tell. So night when we go to Carabas and we get to short we'll bring a bottle of this in with. Yes. Yeah, so we've become wine snobs, and we do not like the the store bought wines they offer at the restaurants. So most of the time, you will find most places will allow you to bring your own bottle of For wine a with you, fee. and they just charge you a corking fee. Sometimes they just Some waive the corking fee. If, if, offer the waiter or waitress a taste. Yeah. Sometimes they'll take it. Sometimes they don't. And either way, sometimes when you talk to them about the wines, they're like, oh, that, you know, that, that sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. And they, they just waive the, the corking fee. But you know what? Some nights where they charge us 14 Well, if, if they don't charge the corking fee, then we just give that back to them in a, in a more generous tip. Right. It's like, okay, so if you charge a corking fee, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you. If the service is outstanding, I'm going to give you 20%. If it's not outstanding, I'm going to give you 10%. I mean, you, you, you have to earn the money with me. That's the way I view things. So if, if you're a waiter or a waitress and you serve us, you better be there for us. When I, when I want my drink filled, be there. When I want another Miller Lite, you be there. When uh, the appetizers, if you order appetizers, don't take forever and don't bring dinner when in the middle of appetizers. Don't bring everything in the middle of appetizers. Don't do that. We are there with family to have a good time. We want to enjoy ourselves. Yeah, we don't want to be rushed through our meal. Exactly. So, you know. Okay, so this is 100 calories per five ounce serving, and it is 0 0.067 carbs per five ounce serving. So very, very low in carbs for this wine. Yeah. Um, so if you're watching those kind of things Oops. when, when, when and in your diet, um, sometimes they kind of sneak in whenever you have stuff like wine and beer and things like that. Uh, and other your like mixed drinks and cocktails, that's where those calories really start to add up and you put on the weight. You're like, I don't understand. I'm, I'm eating well. I'm, I'm restricting my calories. You get on I'm, the scale I'm doing all you're... these things. And you're like, I don't understand. It's the sneaky calories that come in sometimes through your, through your alcohol intake. But these clean crafted wines definitely are lower in calories and carbs than most of your typical store-bought wines. I'll tell you right now. And 
my allergies are really, my nose is really starting to run. Did you take an allergy pill today? No. Well, that's your problem. I took mine today and I'm not having any problems. You see, since the beginning of this video, my allergies are kicking in. <laughs> this is the problem with Florida, is that the, the heat now, we're starting to get a little slightly cooler temperature Well, because tonight. we're starting to get some rain, and starting that tends rain. to cool things off a little bit. And then things bloom, and my nose is getting... Oh my gosh, I went up to the community pool the other night to do to swim some laps while my son was up at the... Uh, with doing his, his workout with the uh, cross-country team. Yeah. I got into the pool, and it was like basically taking a bath. The pool water was so hot. They don't heat it. I just, I, no, they don't heat it. Sun Absolutely baked not. It all just, day. The temperatures outside have baked the, the temperatures of the, the water so much. It was like, it's not even refreshing to get into this pool. Well, I can't take it. It's for work, it's for exercise purposes. Well, I did still swim my laps, but. Yeah. Well, here's the deal we're going to go, but. Good, I love. Oh, just wait, before before we sign off, yeah. just a little side note, a little fun fact, did you know? Um, so all three of these great varieties, the, the Cab, the Zen, and the Petit Syrah, they bring a special profile to this wine. That's the power of clean craft and winemaking, blending three unique components to create a delicious experience. Again, that's what we said before, <laughs> the white, the red doesn't matter. They're blending <coughs> these grapes together and that's how they achieve these particular flavor notes and the taste. As opposed Sorry. to a lot of the store-bought wines, they add other fillers and, and things in, into that to make the wine taste a specific way, regardless of the growing conditions and how that changes the taste of the grapes. And this, this is just pure wine the way that it's, it, it, that it's intended to be. Yep. And it's very, very good. Sorry, I just went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> I'm like, so I took a finger full of cheese hmm. to cool down the pipe. It's a good thing it's just you and me because you would not be allowed to do that at a wine party. No, well, I probably would later. Because everyone's going to <laughs> and, and trust me, the people that come, they don't care. But in the beginning, they do care. They're like, I'm not going to dip my stuff. I know. we got to start planning for when the temperatures finally start to cool off a little bit. We, we can have do a, a, lot a, of a wine party out there in the, the, the wine garden. We actually have a, a couple that we've become friends with through the different wine parties that uh, it, we're gonna be doing a wine party at their house. Yes, and we have a lot of people who that we've got, to, a lot of people who we've asked to subscribe, and they've subscribed to this channel, to Rumble and YouTube, and you're probably watching tonight, or tomorrow, or whenever you're watching it, and they want to come. And I was telling her, we have a lot of people that want to come, so we have to plan accordingly. And people that have come to our wine yes. parties before that have absolutely loved the experience, and want to come back and try some more of the wines to see if that's something that they want to we order. We could do it when mom comes in yes. November. In November, do a big one. Oh, absolutely. It's much cooler outside. It's one. much better, much easier to do a wine party outside at that point. Yes, we'll do a November oh, November wine party before Thanksgiving. Yes, definitely. Wouldn't that be fun? Just, just after Halloween. Yes. To give people time before Thanksgiving. Right. And then that, 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 that gets them. the holiday season just gets so crazy. It's very difficult to get people like tied well, down to, to come do different it's things. It's right before the holiday season, the holiday rush. Yes. And it's, it's in between Halloween and then there's really nothing going on. So it's a perfect time to have a big wine party. Until Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah. we'll have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. And we'll have it out back. And trust me, <laughs> mom, you're watching. I'm telling you, we're going to have a great time. My kids are watching. We're gonna have these at Thanksgiving. Okay. My nose is running, kids. I know. <laughs> it's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and sign off. We're gonna sign Hope off. Hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, definitely like, comment in the in the video. Let us know if you have questions about anything. Yep. Um, if uh, if you'd like to try it, we'll send you the link. Yes, definitely. I don't know of any specials that are going on right now, but definitely uh, let, t take a look on the, the Scout and Cellar site. These wines are fantastic. Anything else on there, if you have questions about if you want recommendations, let us know. Let us know and, and just like, comment, and share uh, on Rumble, YouTube, and Facebook. So have a good night, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.